Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the last installment of my studio-wide project called On My Own. My name is Ida Kavafian, and I teach at the Curtis Institute, where the 16 violinists that participated in this project are students. The challenge was how to get through the pandemic, not just how to get through it, but how to transcend it and how to thrive during it. And I thought that a, a project such as this might motivate them in a very special way. They all had to learn a solo piece that they had never played before and self-produce and uh, record an introduction. And then we had a Zoom chat afterwards, which we will have after tonight's performance as well. And present it to an international audience. What an incredible learning experience for all of us. It really was a journey from the beginning to the end. I'm sorry to see it uh, come to a close, but I'm so proud of how they did. It's just a fantastic display of, of joy for life and joy for music. Tonight, you will hear um, Carissa Chu of Chicago, Illinois, and she will be playing the Prokofiev Solo Sonata, a work that's not played very often. It's a fantastic work, full of character, and she really embraced the the various contrasts and the and the and the spirit that was was needed and the humor to play this piece. We are continuing uh, with Michael Shaham of Israel, who is going to play for you a piece by an Israeli composer, Menachem Zur. And it's really a wonderful piece, very passionate, wonderful, wonderful music. And I had never heard it before, so I was very happy to learn it uh, along with, with Michael. He's also going to play one of the most difficult pieces ever written for the violin by the great violinist Ernst. And it is a variation, set of variations on The Last Rose of Summer. He does a bang up job. We're closing the entire series with one of my very favorite pieces by Nielsen, Carl Nielsen. And it is the Preludium and Theme and Variations. This is a work, a major, major work that is so filled with challenges, technical and musical. And I was so thrilled that Emma Meinrenken of Toronto, Canada wanted to learn this piece. After Emma learned it, several people in the studio decided they also wanted to learn it after they heard it. It, it really is a tour de force. I'd like to thank the Violin Channel for their interest and their support and their presentation of this project. It was such a shot in the arm for all of us, especially my students who, who needed to work towards something. I hope that all of you enjoyed uh, the past four nights or however m many nights you might have tuned in, but especially tonight. And I wish you all well. And I hope that music will help you to transcend this time. We'll all be together soon, I hope, in person, making music and hearing music. Love to everyone. Hello, my name is Carissa Chu and I'm coming to you virtually from Palatine, Illinois. I'm a fourth year student at the Curtis Institute of Music, and I'm so thrilled to be a part of this very special studio project. The piece that I chose to perform for you today is Prokofiev's Solo Violin Sonata in D Major. I was initially drawn to this piece because it is one of Prokofiev's lesser known works and rarely performed, especially in comparison to his more popular violin concertos or sonatas. This was the very last work for violin that Prokofiev ever composed, and sadly he did not live to hear it. It was written at the very end of his life and premiered six years after his death. Something very unique about this piece is that it was written to be performed by either a solo violinist or a group of unison violins, and to my knowledge it is the only existing piece to ask for those specifications. What I love about this piece is that it's so full of humor and wit, with a lot of percussive elements, 
but also many lyrical singing passages. And it's really interesting to try and bring that out and play with that juxtaposition, especially when it happens very suddenly. I feel like this piece is perfect to try and explore the many different colors of the violin, and Prokofiev really gives a lot of opportunity to make this piece your own. And I had a lot of fun during that process, so I hope you enjoy.
My name is Michael Shacham, I'm from Israel, and I am a second year student at Curtis. The first piece I will play is The Last Rose of the Summer by Heinrich Wilhelm Ernst. This piece is a set of virtuosic variations on the Irish poem The Last Rose of the Summer. I don't normally play show pieces like this, so I decided to use the past couple of months as an opportunity to challenge myself and tackle this genre. I'm sure there are still many people who can play this piece much better than I do, but I learned a lot while working on it, and I'm glad I took on this challenge. The second piece I will play is Prelude for Violin Solo by the Israeli composer Menachem Tzur. This is a short and effective piece, which I always wanted to play. Tzur actually dedicated this piece to his son, who loves Brahms, and if you listen closely, you might notice a quote from Brahms' first symphony. It is also a very good encore, and I'm glad I learned it for this project. I hope you enjoy my performance, and thank you. Thank you. 
Canada, 
and I've been studying violin at the Curtis Institute of Music for four years. The piece that I've chosen to share with you today is Carl Nielsen's Prelude Theme and Variations. To me, this is a deceptively simple title that only describes the form of the piece and does nothing to warn the listener or the player of the craziness that it contains. When it came to choosing a piece for this project, I really wanted to choose something that was rarely played and that would also challenge me technically. This piece was written in the same year that Isaiah wrote his set of six solo violin sonatas. And like the sonatas, it sounds remarkably modern for something that was written in the early 1920s. This piece was quite difficult for me to learn, but once I managed to get past the technical barriers that it set up, I was amazed by the range of emotions that it allowed me to cover. The prelude is unhinged and insane, but it dissolves into a very beautiful and simple melody, which sets off the eight variations that follow, which are virtuosic, sometimes tragic, and often quite humorous. These last few months have been quite difficult for all musicians in many different ways, but I'm personally very grateful that it gave me the opportunity to sit down and study great music like this piece that I would have never had time for during a regular year. So I'm very excited to share my work with you. Thank you. 
great concert. Fantastic hey, concert. <laughs> yeah. Bravo to all three of you. I mean, it's just, um, it's just been such a journey, this whole project, getting everybody's um, solo part, solo music, you know, practiced and then a lesson and then a studio class and then the recording. It's, it's been a real learning experience for me and probably for you guys as well. I see Carissa's in a very special place right now. There's Field Concert Hall from our school. Awesome. That's a nice photo, too. Nice lighting. It's very dramatic. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Google Images. So um, does anybody have a, you, you know, don't be shy about repeating what you said in your introduction. If I ask you a question, you know, it's fine. Um, I think people may want to know how you came to um, decide on this on the music that you chose and maybe Michael's a really good um, person to start with because um, I gave him some possibilities and he said may I record this wonderful piece by Menachem Tsur and and it's an, a piece I had never heard and um, you sent me a link to your sister's recording which is really good so uh, tell us a little bit more about that and tell us about your family and and um you know the the musicians that that abound in your family yeah so my dad is a violinist and a really good one <laughs> and actually i know this piece from him because he plays it a lot and he worked with the composer with menachem Tzul back in the 90s i think um about on this piece and he used to play it a lot and he still plays it and as encores and in his programs and I always very I liked it very much and didn't even know it's Israeli you know until yeah. I until I checked it you know until I uh, checked it and now I I think this is the best opportunity to learn these kind of pieces that you never get the chance to learn because also this program this project of the challenge of it really gives us freedom to branch out of the you know from the 1600s to the ninth to the 1800s let's say yeah. Yeah. Some 20th century pieces that you know you can't you, there's no piano needed so yeah there's a lot of rep for that and yeah i think good. that's it well maybe it's a good time to ask um the others what they thought of the of that piece and of course of the last rose which is the other piece that that Michael played. Um, Emma, wh what did you think? What, what was your impression of that piece and how and what Michael did with it? Well, my first impression was basically that I, I looked at the timestamp. It was like three minutes, right? But it felt like so much happened during those three minutes. Like it, it was such a like such a journey to get through that. It felt much longer. Um, yeah, in it was a good way, not in a in, bad way. No, 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 in a very good yeah. way. Um, yeah. So I I definitely, and there's definitely like little motifs to hold on to and things like that. So it was, it was quite nice to listen to actually. Um, Thank you. <laughs> that's nice. And Carissa, do you have anything to add? What was your impression of that piece or the last rose? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with Emma. It's uh -oh. a cool piece. Here we go. <laughs> hello. Sarah Jean, did you come to say hello to all the people? <laughs> she knows all about Zoom. <laughs> Go ahead, Carissa. Yeah, um, I feel like also the last rose came so far from studio class too. It's really beautiful. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good, um, I wanted to touch on the subject of, of um, you know, I think for Michael in particular, maybe the other two of you as well, I think you chose a piece that was going to challenge you the most, the, something that was really going to take you out of your comfort zone and 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 really try to accomplish something new in your playing so i mean am i right in that that's how you came to choose uh, last rose yes totally yeah yeah and how I, about you with that sorry go ahead carissa please i was just gonna say you pick some hard rep <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well um certainly emma's a expert at the at last rose she's done that piece as well it, did you find that that um there were some differences or some insights that maybe michael had that um were interesting to you emma well i've heard this piece many many times both from when i've played it when everybody else has played it and there's certain tropes that people do 
certain place where they take time because it's hard or, you know, certain inflections that they have. And I think you kind of just, in, in a great way, you kind of ignored all of them. You, you really went your own path. And I really appreciated the fact that it really didn't sound like you just listened to somebody on YouTube many times and tried to imitate it. It's really your, your own piece. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think that's special. Good point, good point. How about you, Carissa, and Last Rose? Is this something you've played? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe sometime soon. You've inspired me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, we, we all have to go through it at some point. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about the Nielsen, and then we'll go backwards to the Prokofiev. Um, the Nielsen is a piece that's extremely dear to me, and I was really excited that um, that Emma worked on it and, and brought it to such a, a great level. I, I find that piece to be just so, I just love the piece. I, I don't know <laughs> what it is about it, but I just really love that piece. Um, and you certainly took it to a really an amazing performance. Um, what did you feel like working on it? I mean, when I first started it, I well, I chose it because I always like challenging myself technically. And I think it really did that for me. Um, but I think once I got past all the technical stuff, I think I said this in my introduction, once I get past all the technical things, it's really the music that comes through. And it took me a long time to get to that point. I was working on this for several months and up until maybe the last week before recording, I was still worried about all the individual notes and all the, you know, all the shifts that I'm gonna miss and all that kind of thing. But then when I got to actually performing it in studio class and then on the, on the stage that I recorded, um, it became so much more comfortable to play. It, it was um, really inspiring musically. And the, the thing with that is because I haven't performed in front of people for a long time, um, as soon as I did perform it on a stage, I immediately got all sorts of inspiration of what I'd want to do with it next. And so I immediately, a few days later, I wanted to re-record it because I had so many new ideas. Um, but, you know, I, I, I couldn't do that. But, um, but that makes me excited to kind of continue working on this piece, maybe, maybe a few years down the line, maybe just a few months, just to see where those ideas take me. Well, I certainly hope that when we get back to in-person uh, at school that you'll schedule it on a recital. I think it'd be great for, for our audiences to hear and for other students as well. Um, is it a, so Michael, is it, did you, have you heard the Nielsen before? Did you know the piece before you heard Emma play it? No, I did not. And I must say, um, it's not easy music. It's not very simple music. And besides the technical abilities that you have i think you executed this piece very well just in terms of you know making everything clear and you're just a you're very you you're very good with this kind of music i have to say good i do a, lo I do a lot of theme and variations <laughs> you could yeah. do a whole recital of theme and variations yeah probably <laughs> and how about you carissa is it something you knew of course you knew the nielsen from um from your friend Emma working on it. You guys are, are roommates after all, but um, how do you feel about the piece and how and how Emma executed it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you said this in your intro also, but it, the theme and variations is very misleading title for how much complexity is in there. Um, yeah, it's such an interesting piece and you play it really well. Um, I had a question. Emma, mm. but how, because I know you're working on Nielsen Concerto, right? Yeah, so, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering how it compares to that and if there are any similarities or differences that you found interesting. Um, well, it has a similar, well, you know, same composer and similar aesthetic almost of being very modern, but quite accessible. Like when you listen to it, you enjoy it. Um, it's not necessarily going out of its way to challenge you. Um, and I, I know I personally like that kind of music where it really, you know, makes, it makes you think, but it's not um, combative. Right, mm. and it's also emotive, you know? Right, right, it, and it gives you room to be yourself. Yeah, nice. I think that the fact that it, it's really difficult 
but it also is violinistic in a kind of bizarre way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes you to very far lengths of the technique and the and the effects that you can get on the violin, but it's still um, it's still possible to do. Really mm -hmm. difficult, but it's not like one some of the the works that we play that are really awkward and don't and, and things are just not possible in there. And you can you might be able to do them, but they don't sound well. This takes right. you to the to the nth degree of of what's possible on the violin but it still sounds right sounds good and sounds possible how about the prokofiev let's go to the prokofiev now and you had spoken about um how the piece was interesting to you and that you hadn't um you hadn't played it yet of course nobody had played any of these works before but that wouldn't that be fun for all of us and maybe i'd even join you guys and play very softly to play the Prokofiev together because, as you mentioned, Carissa, it's a oh, piece yeah. that, yeah. Piece yeah, that. you it you can play it, or it's written for a group of unison violins, that, or it could be. Um, yeah. yeah, that would be a very chaotic reading, I think. <laughs> After you know, learning the piece, it's like, yeah, I, don't, I honestly don't know how that would go down. Just I think it would be great, especially with our studio. Do you, like, remember the... The happy birthday collaboration. Oh, yeah. Thought, yeah. So yeah, get it. Yeah. I don't I don't think we would be I think we'd do great. We'd have to just agree on what kind of rubatos and what kind of tempos and things like that. But I bet we could do it. It's um it's a piece that's dear to me also, as well as the Nielsen, because um I studied it with my teacher, Oscar Shumsky, and he um has a recording of it and it's really quite it has the kind of 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 spice and and um bite that i think is great for that for that work and of course he lets some of those fast things go crazy fast and and then he makes it sound great what did you guys ha michael how how did you feel about the prokofiev i liked it very much and i think it was very tasteful you know this is a piece that you can kind of overdo things and maybe use too much spice in some places and i think played it in a very tasteful way good that's nice um emma anything to add well i i like the piece a lot and it's kind of funny to listen to a piece by a very famous composer that you've never heard before um you you would think you know pokofi of solo sonata that's something that everyone would play but um i mean my first impression of it was that it was a funny piece that's kind of silly and it, it didn't take itself very seriously and I it's I think especially with the scope of what we've done in this entire project a lot of the pieces take themselves very seriously and it's very dark and I think that's almost something that happens a lot with solo violin music it, it really has to go there and it doesn't all it's not always lighthearted, and so it's nice to hear something that's a little brighter yeah absolutely we need that. We need that now and always. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just impressed with everyone's performances. Um, it, this project sort of just took off, you know, and, and uh, it was just meant to be something that, that you guys could um, just hang on to while we were trying to figure out where we were going with the pandemic. And and also, I think just the... the um, I think there's a certain beauty in the isolation of playing by yourself. And I hope that that uh, was a positive and good experience for all of you. But I was really proud of your performances and so happy um, with your repertoire choices and, and all of it. So thank you guys for thank taking you. the time to do this. Thank you for doing <laughs> such a great job in your performances. And I will see you at your next lesson. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye, -bye. Bye for now.